I came back to First Street Northwest to find out the progress of the redevelopment project in the old Sursum Quarter neighborhood. Now the redevelopment of Sursum Quarter has been dubbed the Northwest One Project. The name came from Mayor Adrian Fenty's administration back in 2007. Here's a press release from the Noma News explaining how Mayor Bowser finally broke ground in November 2020 for the first phase of the Sursum Quarter rebuild. This project will have 211 replacement housing units for former re residents of Temple Courts and the Golden Rule Apartments. These residents were moved from their homes in 2008. The Northwest One project will ensure their right to return to the completed redevelopment. The first phase of the rebuild will sit along L Street and North Capitol Street. The project is to complement the lively urban Noma lifestyle, the article said. The rooftop deck will contain a pool, a garden area, along with a large club room. The sustainable building will capture rainwater to irrigate the rooftop garden and the building will feature a fitness center, basketball court, and a business center along with a conference room. Northwest One is a game-changing development for the western side of Noma and surrounding neighborhoods, said Bruce Baschuk, chairman of the Noma Business Improvement District. Praising the units designated as affordable housing, Baschuk has stated this project will bring together existing residents and those who are new to the neighborhood. In the 10 years since the Noma Gallaudet Metro Station has opened, Noma has seen a rapidly growing neighborhood with 6,000 new employees moving into the Noma neighborhood in 2019 alone. Now 40,000 people work there every day. The name Noma is an acronym for North of Massachusetts Avenue and I'll show you on a map of how big the neighborhood is and how Sursum Quarter sits right next to it. And with the Sursum Quarter rebuild, this would definitely benefit the Noma neighborhood since they both are situated in the middle of multiple metro train stations and is walking distance to downtown DC. This will bring up property values, give more job opportunities, and improve lifestyles for those living in the area of Northwest DC. An article from the Howard University News Service website said, the new development in district hopes to revitalize neighborhood overrun with crime. And it explains that the Sursum Quarter residents are skeptical and worried about losing their homes and being pushed out of DC. The article reads, once a home to nuns, but now overridden with violence and drugs, the Sursum Quarter neighborhood in Northwest Washington DC will get a facelift in hopes of bringing some of its tranquility from the 1960s back to the community. The crime rate is becoming unbearable, but home is more than just a place you live. This 2007 article states that the start of construction will begin in late 2008 or early 2009, and that a healthcare clinic will be added to the neighborhood with a unity clinic. The redevelopment has had an estimated finish date of 2014, but as we see now in 2022, there were lots of contracts and they were made and broken. And the mayor's groundbreaking had just recently happened in year 2020. The buildings were all torn down, but mounds of dirt just lay in wait, waiting for construction to start years later. The mayor was quoted as saying, Northwest One represents two major commitments we made to residents, investing more in affordable housing and fulfilling the goals of the new Communities Initiative. This was a community-led effort that helped move this project forward as we finally approach the finish line, said Mayor Bowser. We look forward to when the construction is done and when we cut the ribbon and welcome former Temple Courts and Golden Rule residents back to the neighborhood. Phase one of the development will deliver 220 total housing units, including 150 that will be considered affordable. 77 of those will be for residents earning at or below 30% of the area's median income, and 73 will be 
for those earning at 60% of the area's median income. The final 70 will be sold at market rate. Mayor Bowser reaffirmed her commitment to investments in affordable housing with her fiscal year 2021 budget, which includes an investment of $100 million in the Housing Production Trust Fund for the sixth consecutive year and a $1 million investment in the Housing Preservation Fund. At the start of Mayor Bowser's second term, a goal was set to deliver another 36,000 units of housing, including at least 12,000 units of affordable housing by 2025. The mayor's office claims that from January 2019 through October 2020, the district has produced 10,658 housing units, of which 1,692 are affordable. MRP's managing principal, Bob Murphy, has said, The next exciting step is to begin the job training program our team is sponsoring, which will teach construction skills to those seeking to work in the apprenticeship programs on our project as well as other projects in the district. Northwest One Development Partners, LLC, the Department of Employment Services, and McCullough Construction, LLC, will begin the first of six ABC Corps construction training classes in the John and Jill Kerr Conway residence located near the Noma Gallaudet University Metro Station. I've shown you the Saverna apartment buildings in the last video, but to give an update, according to the property management website Mission First Housing Group, the Saverna building on 1st Street was developed in 2011, and the second building, Saverna on K, was developed in 2013. Sorry, I can't tell you if they mean the completion date or the start date of construction, but I am repeating the website. So I will assume that it means the start date of construction. The website also said that Mission First Housing Group partnered with the Golden Rule Apartments Company, a nonprofit affiliate of the Bible Way Church, and the Henson Development Company to complete the Saverna, a 60-unit building located at 1001 First Street Northwest, and the townhouses at 88 through 98 L Street Northwest. Part of the Northwest One New Communities Plan is that this building replaced a portion of the former Golden Rule Center, which was developed by Golden Rule Apartments Incorporated in the 1970s. The Saverna consists of a five-story building at 1st and K Streets Northwest, connected to stacked townhouses, which are called two over two townhouses on L Street Northwest. And these types of townhouses are almost like condo buildings because they have multiple units in one building, but they have their own front door to their own unit. Next up is the Banner Lane project. This is a new community being planned for Sursum Quarter starting on 1st Street. We are thrilled to have the opportunity to write a new chapter for this historic neighborhood, said Charles Elliott, president of Toll Brothers Apartment Living. Banner Lane will realize our vision to develop a brand that will embody authentic, local character and stand out as a genuine place that embraces local culture, arts, and district pride. The Toll Brothers Company has said that Banner Lane is a multi-phase project that at completion will bring 1,100 residences, including 199 affordable housing units, and up to 19,000 square feet of retail space across four buildings, which will be completed in two phases. The 6.7 acre development is now one of the largest active developments in DC. Banner Lane is bounded inside of M Street to the north, L Street to the south, First Street to the west, and First Place to the east. Banner Lane is a new street that has been created for the new community, and that's where the development gets its name from. And this new street will connect First Street and First Place to the new buildings. 
Phase 1 of Banner Lane is currently under construction and will have 561 apartments. Of those, 118 will be affordable. There will be floor plans of studio and one to four bedroom units in two residential buildings. The building along 1st Street will have 216 apartments and feature health and wellness type amenities including a cardio and weightlifting gym, a yoga and cycling room, an outdoor yoga deck, locker rooms, and a pet spa. There will also be a children's playroom, a co-working lounge, and a pool on the second floor with seating overlooking the community park. The second building will include 345 apartments and feature community-driven amenities including a coffee bar, a large co-working space, game room, full-service kitchen and dining room a greenhouse equipped with gardening stations, and a rooftop deck with indoor and outdoor spaces. This phase also includes one acre of public open space. Phase one is anticipated to begin leasing now in 2022. The second phase will deliver the balance of the affordable and market rate units and the retail space. As part of the agreement with Sursum Quarter residents, members of the cooperative will have the right to return to 127 apartment homes in the first phase of Banner Lane. A landscaped pedestrian promenade bisecting both buildings will engage a private street to the north and will lead to a monumental staircase to the south, concluding in a community park. The website says the expected delivery date will be 2023. And another perk of this new community is dubbed The Lawn, and the advertisement reads like this. The Lawn at Banner Lane will be an all-new, multi-purpose public park that will create a new neighborhood gathering place at Banner Lane. Everyone will be able to relax and enjoy curated events throughout the year, and The Lawn at Banner Lane is expected to premiere sometime in 2022. My last visit to Sursum Quarter was a month ago, June 2022, and this is as far as the Banner Lane project has gotten. I'll go back in, I'll say, two months to show how far the progress has moved along. But let me show you the difference of what this neighborhood used to look like and versus the new stuff coming in. Take a walk with me through Sursum Quarter. Let's start at the top of the hill at 1st and M Streets. Here's the old beige and brown brick townhouses before they were knocked down in 2007. Then here's the same street with everything knocked down. Now this is where the Banner Lane project is going to be put in, starting here. And across the street there were always a row of houses. So here's a look at those same houses back in 2007 and then versus 2019. And now let's walk down to the end of the block. Now at this intersection of First Street and Pierce Street, do you remember me pointing to the spot where my junior high school was in my last video? This is the fenced-in empty lot now that used to be R.H. Turrell Junior High School. So here's Turrell in 2007 before the knockdown. And then let me show you this is Turrell halfway torn down in 2008. And then Turrell was totally torn down at the end of 2008 with only the trees left standing. And by the way, if you're saying that I'm pronouncing the name of the school wrong, many people have said that. For those of us who went to the school, we were told to pronounce it Turrell instead of Terrell. And yes, the children from down around DC would say that was stupid <laughs> to pronounce it that way because his wife had a school named after her on the other side of town. So why would you pronounce Mary Church Terrell 
correctly and not R.H. Turl. <laughs> hey, it's a DC thing. <laughs> Okay, so let's keep walking down the street. We're still walking down 1st Street. Now we're on the side of Terrell Junior High School, walking towards Walker Jones Elementary School. So you can see how the two schools were back to back, almost like they were connected. I think there was a clinic back there or something. Somebody would have to correct me on that. I just remember there being a lot of stuff back between the two schools so here's what it looked like when the two schools were disconnected in 2009 while Walker Jones was still standing so now if you look across the street back in 2007 you can see the Temple Courts apartments or did they have houses too I don't even know Maybe somebody who knew the old neighborhood could update us on that. Uh, leave a comment if somebody knows if Temple Courts had apartments and houses. But here's how Temple Courts looked in 2009 after they knocked them down. So let's walk a little further down the street in front of Walker Jones School. Then if you see behind that, there was a parking lot and that parking lot connected to K Street but let's go back up the street a little bit when we saw Temple Courts apartments in 2007 and then again knocked down in 2009 now pay attention to the alleyway now that's where L Street runs through and now these are the Saverna townhouses and apartments as of 2019. So now instead of L Street stopping at the school, a new street has been paved to connect all the way to New Jersey Avenue. So now let's head back down to K Street from where Walker Jones used to be. On the right is where the parking lot was in the back of the school in 2007. And then in 2017, the parking lot has been dug up and the Walker Jones was knocked down. And now the Saverna apartments are across the street. And in 2021, the old parking lot is now a new construction site. So across the street on the corner of First and K Street, is the second Saverna building called the Saverna on K. Here's a different angle of the Saverna on K back in 2014 as it was being built. Now if you can look in the back of the building, you can see the back of the Saverna building on 1st and L streets in the background. And the very spot that the Saverna on K street is being built that used to be the Golden Rule Supermarket. It was a small little strip mall of a few stores. Old Sir some quarter people can tell us about hanging out here, especially after buying beer and cigarettes. So let's go back around the corner to First Street and take a peek at the new construction. I can't really tell what they're building now, so if somebody can say in the comments what you think this new building is let us know I was trying to take a few pictures from a few different angles if that helps at all but right now I can't tell so while I was walking around taking pictures I was looking for somebody to ask their opinion on the new Sursum quarter there weren't many people walking down the street so I did stop a couple standing near their car and I asked them what do you think about the new Sursum Quarter? The guy said he didn't care because he was just passing through. But the woman with him said, It's typical of DC to gentrify everything. I don't expect anything to be here for me, for me to like. I wouldn't be able to afford anything here when they get finished anyway. I asked her, You know that some of the original tenants get to come back, right? and DC government said that the prices here will be affordable to them. The woman turned her head and gave me the side eye. 
You know that look when a person doesn't believe what you're saying. So I moved on and I found another guy that was going to the bus stop and I stopped him. Excuse me, sir. Can I ask you how do you feel about the changes in Surf Some Quarter? He said, oh, I think it's going to be nice. I asked him, was he from Surf Some Quarter? And he said, no, but he goes past this area a lot. I told him I came back to see my old junior high school and I noticed how they knocked it down along with the Walker Jones Elementary. He said, oh, you know they rebuilt the schools around the corner, right? I told him I found a new Walker Jones, but they didn't rebuild Terrell. He said, oh, yeah, they did, because I remember seeing that name on the building. <laughs> so, of course, I'm surprised. What building? He said, turn around and go back up the street. And oh yeah, this is election time, so follow the politicians' ground banners all the way up the street. They will lead you right to the front door. Okay, so here's the building. And oh, wow, I found it. But no, it's not a school. It's a library and a rec center. It's the Northwest One Library. Now here's something I didn't notice before. The library is connected to the side of Walker Jones Elementary School. How on earth did I miss that? <laughs> well, I, I did. Since I'm here, let's answer the question. Who was R.H. Terrell? I got my answer from the African American Registry that says Robert Terrell was born November 27, 1857 in Orange, Virginia. He was a black attorney, teacher, and judge. His parents moved the family to Washington, D.C. in 1865 and at the end of the Civil War and Emancipation. His father, Harrison Terrell, worked for a prominent businessman. Later, he served as the personal valet for General Ulysses S. Grant. Terrell was educated in the public schools in D.C. Then he attended the private preparatory Groton School in Groton, Massachusetts. Later, he was admitted to Harvard University, where he graduated as one of seven magnum cum laude scholars in 1884. While teaching for several years at the M Street School, later called the Perry School in D.C., on October 18, 1891, Robert Terrell married Mary Eli Eliza Church. The two met at the Preparatory School for Colored Youth, now known as Dunbar High School. This was a premier academic high school in a segregated school system. After receiving his LLB degree, which is an undergraduate law degree, in 1889, Terrell was a participant in the March 5th, 1897 meeting of the American Negro Academy to celebrate the memory of leader Frederick Douglass. He worked with them to refute racist scholarship and published books and articles on the history of the sociology of black life. In 1889, Terrell was appointed the Chief of Division, Office of the Fourth Auditor of the U.S. Treasury Department. In 1896, Terrell began a partnership with John Roy Lynch to create the law firm of Lynch and Terrell in Washington, D.C. Their firm closed in 1898 when Lynch was appointed a major and paymaster of volunteers to serve in the Spanish-American War. In 1899, Terrell returned to the M Street High School as its principal. He then left in 1901 accepting an appointment to serve as a Justice of the Peace in Washington, D.C. This marked a difficult time for Terrell and other black leaders. Although Republican administrations appointed Terrell and other black Americans to certain high-ranking political positions, they did not work to achieve greater civil rights for blacks, especially those millions of people oppressed in the South by Jim Crow laws. In 1911, Terrell was appointed to the Municipal Court of D.C. He also received an appointment as a faculty member at Howard University School of Law, 
while still serving as a municipal judge. In February 1911, he became a charter member of the first Washington, D.C. chapter of Sigma Pi Phi Fraternity, an organization of professional men who were college educated. He continued to teach at Howard until he died at his home on December 20th, 1925. Terrell's obituary was featured in The Crisis, the official magazine of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People better known as the NAACP. He was described as a good fellow, tall and healthy to look at, a lover of all men, of his social class, of a good story with a Lincoln tang to it. In 1952, the Robert H. Terrell Jr. High School, named in his honor, opened at 100 Pierce Street, Northwest Washington, D.C. The school was closed in 2006 and demolished in 2008. The site was redeveloped and the Robert H. Terrell Recreational Center was built, also named after him, which opened in 2009. Like I said before, I'll be back to do an update video on the progress of the neighborhood and provide any other information of interest in historical Washington, D.C. If you'd like to help my channel, you can hit the support me button on my channel banner or click the support me link in my about me page. Or you can just simply hit the subscribe button to help me out with the algorithm. I appreciate you for watching and thank you for hanging out with me in D.C. I'm Dickie D, your DC tour guide, and I will see you in the next video.